the numbers are still terrifying. And with malaria, you talk about uh, maybe a million deaths a year, maybe just under a million deaths a year. The tragedy being that most of those are uh, young children. If a disease affects primarily underdeveloped countries, then there's just not a profit margin for capital investment to find a solution. So yes, that's an economic problem. Um, and one that makes you think about alternative ways of doing the research. There's always a need for new drugs coming through because resistance will develop. Uh, in the case of malaria, sadly, we have already seen uh, the development of resistance to the current frontline therapy uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. So it's not going to be long before that begins to spread. <laughs> Uh, tragically spread, as it always does, to other places. And we need, therefore, to have a healthy pipeline all the time of drugs that will come through. Um, I think the rule of thumb uh, is something like 25 or so drugs need to be in the kind of development pipeline. Um, so yes, there's a big promise for, for small molecules to have a role here. Um, you've just got to find them. Well, we are crowdsourcing it. Lots of people will be fantastic, but we do need expert advice, and we need people to make molecules. Um, the project functions best when people contribute uh, real experimental findings. I mean, that's the, that's the goal, really, is to coordinate that in, in a meaningful way. Because with open source, of course, you lay everything out, and everybody have, has access to everything. And if you stumble in the lab and you fall over and you, you, you drop something, you've, you've got to put that there. Everything goes up there. Um, that also means that um, it means that people are up to date. So uh, if, you, if you did decide to contribute to this consortium effort, you can do that with knowing that you are up to date on what's going on. So you're not going to uh, su suggest something to the, to the team that someone's already thought of and done, and it was, it, was, it was done two months ago, but we haven't published it yet kind of thing. Everything's there today. Quality control comes from community feedback. Quality control is assured because of all the data being there. Um, there are also techniques you can use. So uh, if you have lots of participants, you can also, um, to some extent, crowdsource the quality control, which is quite interesting. Our big industrial collaborators on the malaria project are uh, GlaxoSmithKline in Madrid and Spain. And that's partly because the original data that um, is, is being used in that project comes from this enormous public deposition of anti-malarial data in 2010 uh, from Glaxo. Uh, thousands of molecules that are active against malaria, um, which were put in the public domain and of which acted as a starting point for what we're doing. The purpose of the project is to find a good drug for malaria, for treatment of malaria, as quickly as possible. We will do that by adopting a few general principles. One is that all data and ideas are freely shared. Uh, second principle is that anybody can take part in the project at any level. And the third is that there will not be any patents. So with those three principles, we hope to find a compound for the treatment of malaria, which would then be in the public domain and could be developed by anybody for any purpose. Uh, including for the generation of a profit. If we succeed with the malaria project, which of course is the key question, if we can do that, we could extend the approach to something uh, like a drug for a disease which is associated, normally associated in people's minds with a profit, like cancer or Alzheimer's. To find something which could treat people and help people using an open source model in those areas would be amazing, and that's what I'd love to do.